The previous video taught you the general ideas of editorial writing. Today, you will learn the specific steps on how to write one. Hi guys! Welcome back to my class. This is Teacher Adam and here is your weekly dose of English lessons. Writing an editorial is a big responsibility as its main goals are to influence public opinion, to change people's perspective on a certain issue, and to cause them to do necessary actions. Because of this, it is important that a writer knows the right steps to take to avoid defeating an editorial article's purpose. You may wonder how to write an editorial worth of readers' appreciation. And for students writing an editorial for the first time, this video will be of big help. Join me today as we list down the important instructions on how to write an editorial article. The first step is critical, and that is to choose the right topic. A significant topic must be recent and complex. Since it is a social issue, it must affect a great number of people for it to be considered interesting and effective. The topic must also be controversial and debatable. There should be at least two opposing or contradicting viewpoints where one will be the writer's stand. The second step is to collect information about the topic. Gather as much information as possible. And as this is done, the writer must do an objective report. Facts, figures, statistics, and specific details are important to attain this. It is also important that the writer knows a lot about the opposing views. It will be an advantage if the writer can quote the actual details from sources to avoid partiality or unfair treatment. The third step is to write a thesis statement. This will keep the writer focused on the big idea he needs to address in his article. The fourth step is to make an outline. This will serve as the backbone of the article and will help the writer organize his ideas, specifically the arguments and their supporting reasons and evidence. Once all these steps are done, the writer will surely be ready for the actual writing part. The previous video enumerated the different parts of an editorial article. This includes introduction, body, and conclusion. But apart from structure, it is also important that the writer is knowledgeable about the actual content. The introduction contains two general parts, the background of the issue and the reason why the readers must know something about it. Specifically, the background needs to contain details that answer the five W's and an H questions. Who, where, when, what, why, and how. This means an extensive research is really important. The body also includes two necessary parts. The first one is the paragraph that gives the opposing views and the second one gives the arguments and the evidence. It is important that the writer strongly establishes the opposing views, 
not to give it an easy win, but because there's nothing to gain in refuting a weak position. If that's the case, then the topic is not worthy to be discussed as an editorial topic. Then the next part expresses the arguments in evidence. This must start with a transition from the opposing views to the stand the writer supports. Arrange the details from strong to the strongest order. Build your credibility and perceived intelligence through the words you choose. Lastly, the conclusion includes two parts as well, the solution and the punch. Support your solution by citing respected sources. Challenge the readers to be informed. Use rhetoric statements to persuade your readers. Then make sure that the last lines are remarkable. It is not advised to repeat your thesis statement, but it must reflect and support it. The ending part must leave a great impression to the readers. Now that you have already known the specific contents of an editorial, it's now time for us to learn how to make an editorial cartoon. An editorial cartoon is a graphic expression of the creator's ideas and opinions. It intends to make readers think about the current political issues. It must use a visual and verbal vocabulary that is familiar to the readers. There are different elements that an editorial cartoon may include. First are caricatures. These are drawings of public figures in which certain physical features are exaggerated. Notice these examples. We have a caricature of the former U.S. President Donald Trump and another one, the President of the Philippines, Rodrigo Duterte. Second are stereotypes. These are images used to represent particular groups. A stereotypical cartoon of a Filipino would look like this one. Third are symbols. These are pictures that represent something else by tradition. For example, a book is a symbol of education or knowledge. While we know what this statue symbolizes, justice. Fourth are analogies. These are comparisons that suggest that one thing is similar to something else, though the two are unlike things. In this example, corruption is represented by an octopus. Last is humor. This is the power to evoke laughter or to express what is amusing, comical, or absurd. Check out these editorial cartoons. So how would we know what a good editorial cartoon is? First, a good editorial cartoon combines a clear drawing and a good writing. Second, a good editorial cartoon expresses a recognizable point of view or opinion. Third, both the words and the pictures must be recognized by the readers easily for them to understand the cartoonist's message. Reminders Not all editorial cartoons are meant to be funny. Some of the most effective editorial cartoons are not humorous at all. Humor is only one tool available to editorial cartoonists. Editorial cartoons provide a window into history by showing us what people were thinking and talking about at a given time and place. Today's editorial cartoons will provide the same record of our own time.
It is now time for us to check how well you comprehended our lesson for today. Get ready for your homework number 20. Write your rough draft following the outline you constructed. Bear in mind the steps discussed in this video. Save your article in the same document file where you wrote your thesis statement and outline. Follow the format specification below. Then upload a file to Schoology. Before our discussion ends, let's have a short reflection. Here's a Bible verse for all of you. James 1.5 If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given him. The topic we have for today and the tasks it comes with are not easy to do. It requires extensive research, careful planning, and detailed exposition of ideas. So our verse for today is an encouragement for all of you. The Lord is the source of wisdom. He will generously give it to those who ask but work hard. Through God's wisdom, you will gain understanding that will be useful for you to achieve excellent results. May this be your offering to please Him. Praise be to God. That is all for today's video. Thanks for watching. For questions and clarifications, take note of them for the meantime and let's talk about them in our live class. Or you may also book a consultation schedule with me. I sincerely hope that you learned something today. See you on my next video. Stay safe and God bless.